Ladles and Jelly Spoons, welcome back to Badger Works. Today, this. <laughs> Uh, yes, I thought I'd give you a, a little update on the uh, on the, the resin printer heater system that I made. Um, so this is just going to be a quickie today. Stop laughing at the back. Um, so if you remember from the last video, uh, I put a heating pad uh, inside the uh, enclosure for the printer. And uh, it was currently, I think at the, at the time, when the temperature dropped right down to about, well, below 10 degrees in the workshop, this was keeping the printer heated to about 17 18 degrees so the the proof of concept worked but it wasn't really good enough so what i have done i'll show you inside there i have added a second heat mat on the other side uh now i'm, I'm trying to show this is kind of awkward I, I apologize for the shaky cam um but these two are wired together on that junction block down there um so they're both wired into the same wire so that's how that's put together. You'll notice also in the middle there, that is the temperature sensor. And, you know, and the keen eyed among you will notice a different temperature sensor than before. We'll get to that in a minute. So let me put this back on and I'll show you how it all works. Right, give me a second. Right, now this is a bit of a rat's nest uh, and I apologize for that, but that's because I'm still like testing it all out and I'm not gonna tie everything up until I know how it's all gonna work. Um, but what I've done is I've also replaced the the rear stat. You remember the little turny dial rear stat thing that we had? Replaced it with this switch. So this is, to be fair, way over the top for this application. This is a 16 amp inline switch. But I bought this one for a specific reason or a couple of reasons. Firstly, it's waterproof. Um, you can see the switch there. I don't know if you can see that. It has like a rubber boot on it and it's obviously sealed all round. Um, but it's also, as you can see, illuminated. Now, it's not quite illuminated how I wanted it to be, because what I wanted was when I switch it off, the light would go off, but it doesn't. What this light actually does, it shows you that there is power to the switch. But what it does do, if I want to, it allows me to turn off the heat pads. Now, the heat pads, this is now plugged into this switch. Um, you'll have to excuse that reel of filament. This is where my, um, my, my filament printer is. It's like, this is my little 3D printing area here. Um, now that socket there is a thermostatic socket. So the, um, the temperature sensor up there is currently connected to that. It plugs into the side of it. And that tells that socket what the temperature is in the enclosure. Now, I don't know if you can see, but you see it has it has adjustments on it, or controls. And what you can do is you can set an upper and lower temperature. So I currently have this set for a minimum temperature of 25 degrees and a maximum temperature of 28 degrees. And so what this does is when the temperature drops below 25 degrees, which it is now, and the reason the temperature has dropped in there is because I just had the lid off. Uh, it's currently 23 degrees in there. So this switch, as you can see, is powered, it's on. When that temperature climbs to 28 degrees, and you can see it's gradually going up, it will switch off. And then when the temperature drops back down, when it hits 25 degrees again, it will switch back on and the temperature will start to raise. So it will try and keep the temperature between 25 and 28 degrees. Now, so far, it's kind of working. Um, the coldest I've seen this is uh, in the mornings when I come in and it's like three, four degrees or even colder in the workshop. This will usually be about 22, 23 degrees. So it is working. Um, the nice thing is as well with this switch being illuminated is I can tell at a glance whether the heat mats are on or not. Not that it really matters, but just for my own interest. Because if the temperature goes um, too high, it cuts off the power from the socket and this will go off. So I know from at the moment that this is on because the light's on. So that's the basic setup now. And it seems to be working rather well. So there you go. Um, I will put links to all of this stuff 
in uh, in the in the description if you want to uh, do something similar for yourself. Um, but so far, it's all working out rather well. It's also the, uh, nice that this is a lot easier to read for the temperature than the previous temperature gauge that we had, which worked, but obviously it was a, a very small screen and it was uh, monochrome. So it's quite difficult to read at a distance, whereas this I can tell at a glance. And also, as I said, I can tell at a glance whether that is on or off. It also means that, for example, if I want to, if I'm going away for, you know, on holiday or something, I can just switch this off and there'll be no power going to the heat mats. So there you go. So this is, uh, this is all working rather well at the moment. Um, so yeah, it's, I thought I'd give you a little update on where we were. There were quite a few people who were interested in what I'd done before. Um, so I just thought I'd show you the, uh, the new and improved enclosure heating system. So there you go. Hopefully this was of interest to some of you. As ever, I'd like to thank my top tier patrons, Howard, Amy, Chris and Hawaii Clive O for their continued support. And I will see you all in the next video. Thanks very much for watching. Cheers. Bye.